A terrific oncologist in Cleveland wrote a paper called, If I Paint a Rosy Picture, Do You Promise Not to Cry? And I think that sums up um, a certain point of view exactly. And it's kind of a default point of view um, because a lot of clinicians, I think, are, you know, they, they feel like they're being kind by uh, not allowing people to cry, right? Or not, not provoking people to cry. Um, but the reality is, very often what they're doing is they're um, fuzzing over the truth in a way that people don't quite see what they're up against. I'm Tony Bach, and I'm professor of medicine at the University of Washington and the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And I practice GI oncology here. My work in communication got started uh, when I was a medical student, and I would follow around these uh, really famous oncologists on rounds and watch them talking to people and think, there's got to be a way, better way to do this. I didn't feel like we were always totally honest. I feel like we would have one kind of conversation in the hallway or in the conference room before we went into the patient, and a, a whole different kind of conversation with the patient. Good communication is part of good care. Discussions about prognosis are hard, but I think they're a really important component of trust. How we as providers handle difficult conversations can make or break the therapeutic relationship. A lot of data show that the more we listen and help patients say what's on their minds, the more resilient they can be in dealing with their illness. And, and we as doctors and other providers will experience less stress, less burnout, um, if we know how to communicate well. My advice for doctors is uh, suss out what the patient wants to know. So ask them, you know, are you, the are you a detail-oriented kind of person? Do you want the statistics? Or do you really want the big picture and you want to know about something and how this is going to really relate to something in your life? Don't fall into the trap of thinking you haven't talked about prognosis unless you've talked about the statistics. There are a lot of ways you can get to what people need to know without giving them the median survival. And for some people, the median survival will be helpful. And for other people, it'll actually be harmful. So that's where I feel like the way we communicate with people is part of the treatment that we give and part of the care that we give. When denial just means not ready. I talk to a lot of, um, especially trainees, who uh, feel like people are in, in denial all the time. And I think the m more common issue is that people want to talk in stages about where they are, and they're ready to hear a different part of it uh, at, at different times. So I don't think about that as denial. I think about that as uh, it's too scary, right? So my job isn't about breaking down the denial. My job is how can I make it a little less scary? Or how could I introduce parts of it little by little so that they can e eventually um, get the whole picture? The question of hope. So one of the things that doctors ask me is, what do I do about the patient who's hoping for something that I don't think I can deliver, right? And uh, you know, my thought about that is that people are going to hope for all kinds of things, and uh, what I have to do is make sure that they can make some responsible medical decisions at the same time. So really, there's kind of this dual track thing. I can hope for the best and plan for whatever could happen, and those two things uh, aren't mutually exclusive. Department of Health and Human Services USA, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, www.cancer.gov slash prognosis, 1-800-4-CANCER, produced December 2012.